night, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, we are back and we are better than ever, continuing with Earth, Wind, and Fire, let's groove tonight, and we are going to finish up quantiles or K values, this is part two, so let's get to it, shall we? So here's the importance of quantiles. Um, we always, if, if we're going to convert, uh, we must convert to z-scores in order to find the answer for some of our questions. And we always need to convert to z-scores if we are trying to find an unknown mean or standard deviation. Okay, so if you're given the data and you, and you're, you have to find the mean or the standard deviation, you got to convert to a z-score. Okay, so let's do an example. There are only two. Um, let's see, we have an adult scallop population, and it's known to be normally distributed um, with a standard deviation of 5.9 uh, grams. And if 15% of the scallops weigh less than 58.2 grams, find the mean weight of the population. All right, always start with a sketch, okay? So we have 15% of the scallops, they weigh less than 58.2 grams. We know we have a standard deviation of 5.9 and we're looking to find the mean. So what does all of this mean? No pun intended. <laughs> so what we have here is we have a random variable x. It's normally distributed with a mean mu and a standard deviation of 5.9, okay? Um, and we're looking for mu. Now, normally we could just do inverse norm and be done with it, um, but we don't know the mean. That's what we're looking for. But we can convert to our z-scores, and our z-scores, we know that our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. Okay, well, what do I mean by that? Well, what we're looking for is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to 58.2 grams. Okay, so let's see, I need parens there, obviously. And we, um, we know that that is equal to, that that probability is 15%. Okay, we also know that to convert a piece of data to uh, be a standard normal variable, we can use this handy dandy formula from our formula sheet. Standardized normal vari variable, z equals x, the piece of data, minus mu over the standard deviation sigma. So I can rewrite this equation thusly. Oops, if I had my pen I could. So that would be the probability that the standard normal variable, um, z, is less than or equal to, now I'm going to use this formula, I'm going to write it since we're doing standard normal now, I have, this piece of data has to be converted. So I take 58.2 minus the mean, which we are looking for, over the standard deviation, which is given to us as 5.9, okay, and uh, we know that's going to be equal to 0 0.15. Well, now I'm going to use inverse normal to see what this must be equal to. Okay, There is some value where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation of, is 1, where 15% of the curve is, uh, or the area under the curve, uh, the value where 15% of the curve is, is covered up, this, this part right here. Okay, so all I have to do is go to my handy dandy calculator now to find out what that has to be. So I'm going to do menu, uh, probability, distributions, inverse norm, okay, and I want my area to be 0.15% of the area to be covered, 0.15. Mu is zero, uh, sigma is one. Bam, and I get negative 1.0364. Go out, you know, a little ways because we're going to have to use this in equation. So I'm going to remember that, negative 1.0364. Oopsie. Okay. So now this guy, our Z score, Z, well, I don't have to put Z1 for this problem, is equal to 58.2 minus mu over 5.9 
which also must be equal to, from our calculator, negative, I'll say approximately equal to, because we don't have our, um, uh, all, we're not going to use all of our digits, negative 1.0364. Okay, so now I have an equation right here that I can solve for the mean. Okay, and you could use your calculator to do so. I'm not going to go through the steps. I know you know how to solve that equation. And we get the mean approximately equal to 64.3. 64.3. So that means that the inverse norm um, with a mean of 60.4.3 and a standard deviation of 5.9 should be 58.2. So let's just uh, let's just check that real quick just to verify so you uh, you completely understand what's happening here, what we just found. Probability, distributions, inverse normal. So um, the area was we needed 0.15. Uh, we found the mean to be about 64.3 and the standard deviation is 5.9. And this should turn out to be 58.2. Let's see. Oh, okay, bam. There you go, 58.2. So everything is great. Okay, uh, last example. Let's get to it. Find the mean and standard deviation. Holy smokes here. So I'm going to stop right there. We have to find the mean and we have to find the standard deviation. That's two different variables. So that might clue you in that we're going to need two equations. And that is correct. Of a normally distributed random variable x, if the probability of the uh, random variable x is less than or equal to 20 is equal to 1, and the probability that the random variable x is greater than or equal to 29 is... 0.15. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Always draw a sketch, it helps. Okay, so 0 0.1, 0 0.15. Okay, and we're also going to use our handy dandy little formula here. Okay, so we're going to have to work up two equations. So let's start with this guy. Okay, so the probability that the standard variable. Um, or the random variable, sorry, is less than or equal to 20 is equal to 0 0.1. So we're going to convert that to a z-score. Okay, So the probability that the uh, standard random variable, z, is less than or equal to, and I'm going to change this to a z-score. We'll call this our z1. Okay, So I have to put it in this formula here. Less than 20 minus mu over sigma, and these are the guys we're looking for right up here, we know it's equal to 0 0.1. Okay, now all I need is what this should be equal to. Okay, and how do I get that? Well, I can now use the inverse norm uh, for standard because I know that in a, uh, standard, a standardized distribution, standardized normal distribution, my mean is 0 and my standard deviation is equal to 1. So I can use my inverse norm again. So let's go to the calculator. Um, I'm going to go up here. Bam. And this time it's 0.1. Um, and I get negative 1.28155 blah 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 blah. So what I will use is that um, z sub 1 is equal to 20 minus mu over sigma. And I know that this is, in order for this probability to be true, this z-score must be approximately equal to, sorry for the straight equals, approximately equal to negative 1.282. Okay, And I'm going to solve this for sigma, so that would give me 20 this equation right here now, okay, this equation here, I'm going to solve for sigma. That would be 20 minus mu over negative 1.282 is equal to sigma, OK? 
Okay, if I multiply both sides by sigma, then divided by negative 1.282, blah, 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 blah. Again, that's approximately equal to, because we didn't, it's impossible to get all the decimal points there. Okay, and this is equation number one. So we need another equation. So we'll do this guy. Now let's think about this. If this is true, that means that the probability that the random variable x is less than 29 has got to be equal to 0 0.85. Okay, and then remember when you're working with inverse norm, you have to do that. So the probability that the standard normal variable, z, is less than uh, 29 minus mu over sigma. Again, I'm just uh, changing this to the z-score. That needs to be equal to 0 0.85. Okay, so now I need to go back to my calculator to see what this should be right here. Um, I need to find out what this guy needs to be equal to in order for this to be true. It's going to be standardized. So I go back to my calculator. Same uh, mean and standard deviation. It's just the coverage of area. I need to be 85% and I get 1.0364, blah, 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 blah. So what does that mean? That means for Z2 is equal to 29 minus mu over sigma. Um, that is equal to, or approximately equal to, uh, 1.036. We round that, just I use three decimal places there. Solving that for sigma, I get 29 minus mu over 1.036 is approximately equal to sigma, okay? So I'm going to put this into my graphing calculator and solve it. And so that means that this is my y, standard, devi standard deviation is my y, and x is going to be my mean, okay? X is going to be my mean. So I crank that in the uh, graphing calculator, um, and I've already done that. I'm not going to go through how to do that. You guys know how to do that. You'll have to, you know, use your head a little bit to find this intersection. So remember, um, sigma was y, and the mean was x. So that means I had a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of about 3. 8, 8, and I'll go back and write that down. So that means that um, uh, our mean was about 25 and our standard deviation was about 3.88. Okay, uh, I believe that I have done all the damage I can do. Let's go ahead and fade out, see how earth, wind, and fire are doing. Oh no, I didn't pause them. What do we got going here? Oh, it's still going. All right. All right. So um, I believe that's all I have, and I am out.